unsupervised discovery of uh, ancestry informative markers and genetic admixture proportions in biobank scale and data sets by Dr. Sion Ku. Uh, a brief introduction uh, to Dr. Ku. He is a postdoctoral scholar working with Dr. Lenz and uh, Dr. Zhao in the Department of Computational Medicine. Uh, his research interests include large-scale computational methods in biostatistics and bioinformatics using parallel and distributed computing. He earned his PhD degree in statistics from Seoul National University in South Korea. And uh, he has an MS degree in computational sciences and uh, with a BS degree in physics, mathematical sciences and computational science. So without much ado, I invite Dr. Ku uh, and let's hear from him. Oh, just uh, before we start. Uh, so we are recording this uh, presentation and it will be made available uh, by the ECR website later on. Uh, and uh, in order to run this smoothly, please mute yourself unless you are talking. And if you have any comments, feedback, or question, please use the chat box. So uh, again, thank you for coming uh, online and uh, Dr. Ku. Thank you for introduction, TV. Hello, my name is Seyun Ko, and I will talk about unsupervised discovery of ancestry informative markers and genetic admixture proportions in biobank scale data sets. This is joint work with Dr. Benjamin Chu, Daniel Peterson, and Chidaro Kinwa, who, who, are, who, who, who are a big a Bruins in genomics summer students. David H. Alexander, who is the original author of the, the original software. And Drs. Jeanette Pep, Eric Sobel, Fuzzo, and Ken Lang, the professors in the Open Mendel group for open source software for statistical genetics led by Dr. Ken Lang. And Dr. Suazo and Ken Lang are my PIs. This work is published online earlier today in the American Journal of Human Genetics. What we do is inference of ancestry of each, each people. And why it is important is, is that it is often a confounding factor in genetic studies. So we, we may observe genotypes and associations in genotypes and traits in many cases, but if we don't consider ancestry, the correlation might be spurious. A classic example is PMI in study of type two diabetes. There was, <clears throat> there was a negative correlation between this haplotype and lowered risk of type 2 di diabetes observed. Uh, however, when, when people at the time carefully tabulated the SS3, it was revealed that this association was spurious and, and this was not real. What, is, what can be learned from this case is that ancestry needs to be considered for genetic studies, or we may risk false positives, and it should be considered in fraction, and classical stratified design is not adequate. And self-reported ancestry, often in labels, is often inaccurate, especially in fractions, especially in fractions. So we deal with population structure with other methods, we as estimate ancestry with of each individual and use it to correct for population structure using computational methods, and they are often added as additional covariates for adjustment in analysis analysis like genome wide association studies or GWAS, or we can use a linear mixed model to in to estimate the population structure. Here are several existing approaches for population estimation. 
one direction is model-based approaches like <laughs> maximizing the likelihood of some kind of binomial model. The softwares in include, include Frappe for using the EM approach and admixture, which is which became the deep vector standard from, <clears throat> from the current research group. And there are algorithm-based approaches often based on direct matrix matrix decomposition, like, like PCA, principal component analysis, which is fast but hard to interpret, and constraints non-negative matrix factorization method also exists. And scope is the, is the software that, that is scalable up to biobank scale, which is 1 million subjects or n 1 million genotypes. <clears throat> Let's review some of them. The original admixture software is from my current group read by Dr. Ken Lang in 2009, and it got over 5,000 Google Scholar citations for estimating ancestry. This is model-based approach or than likelihood of population allele frequencies and admixture proportions, but it had several limitations. It was too slow for more than data sets of millions of genetic variants and millions of samples, and it used too much memory for, for the matrix of size million by million, and it is not open sourced. And another one I will review is scope. This is also from this is also from UCLA. <clears throat> this is algorithm-based approach relying on non-negative non-negative matrix factorization, which involves latent subspace estimation and alternating least squares. This one is the first tool to scale up to the bibank scale through the randomized linear algebra. But its, its acceleration still involves intensive memory usage, and it is sometimes unstable and noisy. And, and as a statistician, it is the model being not like, likely based is a limitation, and it is often less accurate than admixture on simulated data set. Let's see input and output format of this problem. The input is I by J genotype matrix, where I is the number of samples and J is the number of genetic variants, where the genetic variance is in the form of single nucleotide polymorphisms. <clears throat> this is often in binary format. And K is the number of clusters or number of ancestry or, popula or population. And the output would be the matrices P and Q, P for ancestral population allele frequencies, and Q for admixture proportions. Matrix P is K by J, Q is K by I, and, and because Q is admixture proportions, we have constraint that the sum, sum over each population of each sample should be one. Now let's talk about how the data are presented. Are represented, it is in the form of SNPs, single nucleotide polymorphism. It is genomic variant at a single base position in the DNA. In case of human, it is three times 10 to the power of nine base pairs. And, and the bases are very, very similar for each, pe each people. So we concentrate, concentrate on several points where it varies a lot, and we have about several, several million spots that we care about. Genotype matrix is I by J matrix with three possible values as entries. Zero is for homozygous allele one. So, so each, Each person has two sets of chromosomes, and for, for that position, we have allele one 
in both in both of the chromosomes. And we can have value one if the two chromosomes have different alleles in that position. And if they have the same allele of, of the other option, it, it, we can represent it as value, value two. And in re reality, we also have an encoding for a missing value where the <coughs> where we we have missing val missing value for exact allele pos position there. So we have four possible values to in to encode in the in the matrix in the genotype matrix. So so we can represent it represent it in two bits per entry. And with recent bivalent scale data, I and J are like half a million to million. And that is about 60 to 200 gigabytes of size, thanks to the two bit per entry compression. So, so it can be kept in memory of, of the of the computer is often used used for research researchers, which which has relatively larger memory of about 200, 256 gigabytes. So if if we get any other I by J matrix, it would not fit into memory in most cases unless we use multiple computer nodes. The main approach we use, we call it the open light mixture. It makes model-based approach to run with modern, modern bioscale data. It is twofold. First, we do dimensionality reduction using the unsupervised ancestry informative marker or AIM selection using the sparse k-means via feature ranking method. Among a set of large number of SNPs, we choose SNPs that help distinguishing different populations. And most of the existing methods for AIM selection is supervised out there. But, but in biobank scale, the, the labels are often inaccurate. So we use unsupervised method for this one. And the second step is acceleration we write faster version of admixture with software, software optimization tricks and run it on the selected aims. In Julia, we use SIMD vectorization, same uh, single instruction, multiple data, multi-threading, GPU, graphics processing unit, and others. Let's get to the methods. So we will we'll talk about the first part, dimensional dimensional reduction or ancestry informative marker selection, and numerical optimization algorithm involved in admixture, and then software optimization. So first up, ancestry informative marker selection. We do joint clustering and aim selection through the sparse k-means by a feature ranking. We use standardized data matrix, which can be computed on the fly <clears throat> with I samples and J features. And we have K clusters seeking to assign each sample I to a cluster CK that, that, minimizes, cluster, that minimizes the within cluster of squares. It can be represented by this kind of Euclidean distance where B, is, B denotes binary matrix for cluster membership, and the large theta is for cluster centers, whose J through O represents the center of cluster CJ. Only S of the columns of theta are allowed to be non-zero for feature selection. The algorithm for solving this problem is a three-step descent algorithm. 
And steps one and three, you might be familiar with it if you know k-means clustering, because these are the steps invo involved for classical Lloyd's k-means algorithm. We update the cluster centers and reassign samples to the cluster to the closest centers according to the, the cl closest centers. What we do differently is ranking and selecting S features according to their contribution to the objective function, which is computed by this measure, HL. And we zero out the features that is not selected. And then we, we reassign the set we assign the samples to the closer centers according to only the selected features. <clears throat> and as I said, there, is, there are missing values in the genotype matrices. So what we do in that case is imputing missing genotypes. And because we have, <clears throat> we assign each sample to one of the clusters at some point of the, the SKFR, we, use, we impute the missing values with the current cluster center of each sample. It is represented by this formula where omega is the set of indices with observed genotypes and P omega is projection of, of a matrix onto a subspace with the indices not in omega zeroed out. Then this function will, with the imputed genotype, genotype matrix, majorizes the, <clears throat> the original objective function given here. So this is guaranteed to be a decent algorithm thanks to the MM majorization minimization principle or the, or the surrogate, also called surrogate method. So what we do is we repeat until convergence, we impute the missing genotypes with the current cluster center and run an iteration of SKFR with the, with the imputed genotype matrix. Now let's go to the numerical optimization algorithm. In terms of numerical optimization, after feature selection, we maximize the low likelihood of the sel selected, is selected slips or ancestry informative markers. The low likelihood, low likelihood is formulated as as this formula. And now we are using 0, 1, 0, 1, 2 values for the genotype matrix. And we, we, we maximize this low likelihood with block sequential quadratic programming and quasi Newton acceleration. And, in, and for this one, missing genotypes are now dismissed. And the final result would be matrix P and matrix Q, P being population allele frequencies and Q being admixture proportions. Let's talk about sequential quadratic programming that is being used. This is a generalized, generalized Newton's method where we have constraints on the matrix P and Q. Matrix P, it has each value should be in zero and one, should be between zero and one. And for matrix Q, it is also between, also each element should be between zero and one. And some of each column should be one for Q because it is it's proportions. So under this constraint, we, we solve this maximization problem using, the, using a quadratic programming store bar. And we require gradients and Hessians of the low, 
of the low black cleared to maximize it. However, if we optimize it jointly for P and Q, the full Hessian is of size I plus J times K by I plus J times K. And, and this is too much memory because I, as I said, I by J, we cannot hold I by J matrix in memory. So instead, what we do is block relax relaxation. We update, we alternately update Q and P by the sequential quadratic programming. Because if we do, do this, the Hessian res with respect to matrix Q looks like this. And only the terms involving the, the same sample survives and all others, the terms invo involving different samples are all zeroed, I, all zeroed out. So we only have to store K squared times I entries. So the Hessian fits into memory now. And low likelihood is block, block gradients and is block Hessians are all fully, fully separate, separable with respect to I. So this IK dimensional quadratic program can be separated into I small soft, soft problems of dimension K, which is very quick to solve. So we repeat until convergence, fix P and update Q using the block residence and Hessians available with respect to Q and then solve I K dimensional QPs and then fix Q and update P with the gradients and block hessians with respect to P, we solve J, K dimensional quadratic programs. And for further, further acceleration, we use quasi-Newton acceleration. In many cases, convergence of EM expectation maximization, MM, or block relaxation me methods tends to be slow. So for a word map F, and, and this function g, x, g equals x minus f x, we use the second approximation given by this. Near, near convergence, it should, the, the near convergence, this linear of, of, approximation sh should hold. And by, minima by minimizing, this M under the second, con second condition based on the recent values of the left-hand side of this equation and the right-hand side of this equation. We approximate this differential of the algorithm map. And using this algorithm map, we get simple Newton update here, which is simple enough to compute. And the third piece is, is software, opt software optimization. Now it is optim optimizing the, the original admixture software. The bottleneck of this algorithm is still the block action computation whose time complexity is big O of i, j, k squared. So the block action looks like this. And to compute this, Block Hessian, it is actually conceptually quadruple for four loops. We we have we have to iterate over this index J for genetic variance and this index I for each sample. K and two in the two indices for populations. So the loop would look like this. The question is, is this fast enough? 
Before moving on, let's talk about the language choice we use Julia. We aim to solve two language problems. We prototype <clears throat> because in many cases for R or Python users, we often prototype in R or Python and we write production code in C and C++. So we have to work with two languages in most cases. Julia solves that problem by having a syntax similar to Python, hence work like Python, and one like C, having the speed similar to C thanks to the just-in-time compilation. So what we do is write high-level abstract code that closely resembles mathematical formulas, yet produces fast, low-level machine, machine code that has traditional that has traditionally only been generated by static languages like Fortran. And it gives natural access to high performance computing with multi-threading and GPU programming with simple syntax. And using Julia, I was able to easily involve use of easily involve automatic factorization software by, by simply decorating a loop with at Turbo, this word generates well vectorizes LLVM code through the loop vectorization package. And I used explicit implementation of recursive tiling by splitting the I by J index space into small pieces to improve to improve to improve programs locality and improving cache usage for faster computation. But by recursive tiling, <clears throat> we improve locality. Locality means in a computer program, when data are loaded, the data them themselves or data near them is likely to be referenced again soon. And cache memory is designed to exploit this locality. And by split, Splitting the i by j in index space into small small pieces in divide and concur fashion, it it improves the locality, parallelization, parallelization by by improving th thread locality, or another loop of re reduction through of the loop ness. And this type of recursive tiling is impl implemented for low likelihood low likelihood computation and to compute gradients and hessians for CPU version. And, and these terms in, included in the low likelihood and gradients and hessians are also computed on the fly block by block to reduce the memory usage. And here are some multi-threading used in our new package. Simple loops can directly be multi-threaded with the parallel four syntax and automatic vectorization also supports multi-threading. And when using recursive tiling, we can let each thread to run each tile, improving the thread locality for faster, faster runtime. And these are not, these are what is not directly supported in R or Python. And furthermore, Julia has a nice support for GPU programming, specifically, and I was able to specifically design CUDA colors to directly compute gradients and hessians from the bit patterns of the data set in Julia. And here are the results. For the simulated data sets, we, we sampled P, the matrix P and Q from these distributions, P from the beta distribution, Q from the Dirichlet distribution, FST is fixation index, and PA is allele frequency. And FST and PA are sampled from the computed values of the real world thousand genomes project data set. And when, when we computed root mean square errors, with different set settings of 
number of samples, number of SNPs, and number of populations with the different percentage of SNPs or aims selected by the SKFR, we have this result. In all of, all of the cases, it, it was either the original, original admixture was the best or the scope, scope method based, algorithm based method was the best. However, our, our, our new method by feature selection, it always gave a nice result be between those two results. And in faster time and with possible GPU acceleration. The result, all the values with 10% to 20% selection, all of them are between the, these two values. And here are the results with the real world data sets. Only autosomal slips were included for all the analysis. And for 1,000 genome, genomes projects, we first filtered to only include unrelated individuals with 90 per, over 90%, uh, 95 percent of genotype success rate and over 1 percent of minor early frequencies with 1,700 individuals and 1.8 million SNPs. And we used eight popula populations to estimate where we have 26 population labels across five super continental superpopulations of European, American, South Asian, African, and East Asian. And for UK Biobank data set, we have nearly 500,000 individuals and over 600,000 SNPs. The data of over 70 gigabytes with two values of populations four and nine. And here's timing for thousand genomes products data. This is timed on 16 threads of G5, four, four times large instance in AWS, which has NVIDIA 810G GPU, GPU. And SKFR to select 100,000 names took one, one minute and 36 minutes and run the open ad admixture with the selected aims on a GPU took three minutes and 50 seconds. And the entire scope run, the, the algorithm in comparison, it took 16 minutes. So one time for SKFR and open ad mixture, likelihood maximization is way shorter than time needed for scope for this data set. And for UK Biobank data set, whose size is much larger, maybe because scope needed more memory, I had to use an instance with larger memory. And the runtime, the SKFR runtime was 44 minutes. Runtime for open, open ad, ad mixture, 29 minutes. And runtime for the other method, one hour, 32 minutes. So we, so we, so to total runtime of, of SKFR and likelihood maximization is similar to scope. While using less memory. And another timing result would be per iteration time of the likelihood maximization step. How faster did we get compared to the original admixture software? Per iteration time on a 100,000 genome project subset, the original software on a single thread took 79 seconds. And with 16 threads, it took 48, 48 seconds. This is C++ using OpenMP. And with a new software on a single thread, it took 28.5 seconds. And on 16 threads, 
it is six seconds. And using GPU, it, it was further accelerated, accelerated to 1.6 seconds when using single precision. Now let's see the hard clustering performance from the SKFR step. The SKFR for selecting aims was, was run for these number of aims with eight populations and we compare the clustering result with the labels, the superpopulation labels in terms of adjusted rent index and normalized research information to check how correct are the clustering results. The, it, it, the limitation is that superpopula superpopulation labels might be noisy, but but we have a good good pro we have a we use it as a proxy to the true labels, and the baseline we compare it to is standard k means with all the SNPs, and we see the the, the aim selection methods gets better better adjusted random index in and normalized visual information, they are the higher, the better. Com compared to the baseline k-means method. And when we only compare the subjects, not from ethnic Americans, well, one of the five continental labels are ethnic Americans, they are labeled as ethnic, so, if we if we ex exclude it, the clustering performance performance is perfect, one point zero values in ARI and NMI. So the results with aims selected is more concordant with the superpopulation labels compared to the orig original K-means clustering. And here is the visual, visualiz visualization of population estimates <clears throat> gener generated by open admixture using all the SNPs, open admixture using 100,000 SNPs, and the scope method. On the axis, axis is sampled grouped by populations. And on, on the y-axis is the, the proportion of each population where each population is color-coded. <clears throat> and the original admixture gives nice, less noisy results. And using, and this one is using 1.8 million SNPs and open open admixture using 100,000 100, SNPs. It, it, it slightly differs from the results from, from the top row. But, but with the scope, it is, it is, it seems much noisier. And let's see how well the, the labels are reconstructed. Number of population we are esti estimating and the number of labels are different. So we check how well the super populations can be separated using the uh, admixture proportions. We train software classifiers using the cycle learn package and compare accuracy and cross entropy, where cross entropy is giving, given by this formula and how well, <clears throat> how well the binary indicator for the labels are. We, we check how well the binary ind indicators are concordant with these proportions. And we also can compare 
root mean square error with the full admixture result. Here's the result. Cross entropy is the lower the better. RMSC also the lower the better. And, and baseline is the admixture using all the SNPs. So RMSC is zero because, because it is RMSC from the baseline. And you, you see, with, by selecting more than 60,000 uh, 60, SNPs, 60,000 aims, we get better cross entropy compared to the sc scope result in terms of both cross entropy and RMSC. And using the UK BioRank data set of 500,000 people, the, the training accuracy of the CREST fire is 0 0.999 for four continental populations. European, African, South Asian, and East Asia. And we can also try to see substructure of British people using the methods with more populations. The, these, these substructure li labels are based on UK, based on UK Biobank assessment centers, each sample visited split into five regions, South and North England, South and North Wales, and Scotland. And then the accuracy with the open admixture with nine populations was the highest compared to scope with the same number of populations and PCA with eight principal components, which has same number of three parameters. Here's a summary. So we developed a biobank scale, unsupervised aim selection method, ancestry informative marker to estimate admixture. And the aim selection step cuts runtime and gives a well-balanced result. And open admixture is 2.8 times faster than admixture in single thread and eight times faster in 16 thread situation. And it can be further accelerated using a GPU and model-based, memory-efficient, and more reliable than scope is our new open admixture software. The feature directions would be second order, would be that second order method works well as long as the K number of populations is kept small, but with more populations, first order method may be more beneficial and choice of good number of number of populations and number of aims to be selected may be more principled using the gap statistics. And, and this could be more competition in bird system, but so, so using multiprocessing may come in handy for this kind of project. And here's the link to the GitHub software we developed. And this is the talk, thank you for listening. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Any questions, feedback? Just raise your hand and uh, uh, I can call your name. Uh, Lisa. Hi, thank you very much for that presentation. My question is about your real world data sets. Mm -hmm. um, one of the sources had a small number of participants, but lots of SNPs. And yes. the UK Biobank was the opposite. A, mm -hmm. um, a lot of participants, but only a few SNPs. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about how that ratio affected your, your processing and your results? Um, the size of data differs signif significantly between them. So, so UK, running UK Biobank is much, much harder thing. And, and it, it was previous, previously impossible with, with the 
previous ad admixture soft software. And and selecting selecting more SNPs as as aims make making the memory making the memory uses more significant in in UK Biobank with the same number of SNPs. And actually, the number of SNPs selected. <clears throat> it involves the size size of the size of the GPU memory. So you didn't see any difference in accuracy because of the number of SNPs relative to the individuals. It was more about just computer processing time. Um, it is more about computer processing time, and in terms of accuracy, we we have, we have simulated data sets. A simulated results here. The, the, the issue with the real world data set is that we, we do not know the, 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 the ex exact admixture pro proportion. That is, that is why we had to run simulated, simulated data sets. And with more samples and SNPs, we tend to get better results in some cases and it, it, it depends it, it depends on that setting I would say the, the, the more steps we use we will get more accurate and the more samples we use, It depends because we, we have we have different values to to estimate for each different sample. Okay, thank you very much. Any other question? If not, uh, I think uh, one thing I want to know is. Uh, so these are all uh, you ran on a single system. It looks like 16 threads, meaning um, a single uh, server. Is that right? For, 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 for small data set, the thousands of genomes projects, it was run on a single system. For UK Biobank, the, the first step was run, run on a, an instance with ma many threads. And and for open literature, the second step was run on an instance with a GPU, NVIDIA V100. So yes, but it is still on a, a single server in the sense that uh, it doesn't leave a, a single physical system. GPU is connected to the same system. So um, what I mean is, uh, it's there are two uh, two uh, uh, per type of parallelization. One is thread based, which is OpenMP, and another is uh, the uh, task based, which is uh, the OpenMPI or MPI kind of. Yeah. So it seems like your uh, computations have been using the thread based uh, whereas i see the uh, it was on slide 26 26 so all these uh, uh, loops mm -hmm. they seem all like uh, independent yes for, for, for each index it is is is, it is independent so mm -hmm you could theoretically use much, much uh, larger uh, number of threads. Yes. And uh, still the time will reduce. It won't uh, saturate in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This index, index space was tiled 
into smaller pieces for for further acceleration and locality, better locality. So yeah, and this wanted to point out uh, that means uh, you can use uh, like much much larger uh, problem size with uh, a lot of scaling as possibility. Yes. In this uh, for index K two mm -hmm. and K is that uh, right? K K is for this one and K two is actually for L here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, um, yeah, looks pretty promising. Thank you so much for presenting this. Thank you. Any other questions from the audience? If not, uh, let's thank uh, Dr. Sion uh, uh, for a beautiful presentation. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed and you learned something new. <clears throat> so uh, we have these uh, ECR presentations uh, almost every month and uh, I hope you will uh, join uh, at the next ones. So thank you again and thank, thank you, Dr. Gu.